inherited it from certain ancient and mysteriously engraved plates of copper, which he declares he found under a stone in an out-of-the-way locality. The work of translating was equally a miracle for the same reason. The book seems to be merely a prosy detail of imaginary history with the Old Testament for a model. Put it down right there. Followed by a tedious plagiarism of the New Testament, the author labored to give his words and phrases the quaint, old-fashioned sound and structure of our King James James's translation of the scriptures. And the result is a mongrel, half modern glibness and half ancient simplicity and gravity. The latter is awkward and constrained, the former natural but grotesque by the contrast. Whenever he found his speech growing too modern, which was about every sentence or two, he ladled in a few such scriptural phrases as exceeding sore and it came to pass, etc., and made things satisfactory again. And it came to pass was his pet. If he had left that out, his Bible would have been only a pamphlet. <laughs> the title page read as follows. The Book of Mormon, an ancient, an account written by the hand of Mormon upon plates taken from the plates of Nephi. Wherefore, it is an abridgment of the record of the people of Nephi and also of the Lamanites, written to the Lamanites who are a remnant of the house of Israel and also to Jew and Gentile, written by way of commandment and also by the spirit of prophecy and revelation, written and sealed up and hid up unto the Lord that they might not be destroyed, to come forth by the gift and power of God unto the interpretation thereof, sealed by the hand of Moroni and hid up unto the Lord to come forth in due time by the way of Gentile, the interpretation thereof by the gift of God, an abridgment taken from the book of Ether also, which is a record of the people of Jared, who were scattered at the time the Lord confounded the language of the people when they were building a tower to get to heaven. He it up is good, and so is wherefore, though why wherefore? Any other word would have answered as well, though in truth it would not have sounded so scriptural. Next comes the testimony of three witnesses. Be it known unto all nations, kindreds, tongues, and people unto whom this work shall come, that we, through the grace of God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, have seen the plates which contain this record, which is a record of the people of Nephi, and also of the Lamanites, their brethren, and also of the people of Jared, who came from the tower of which hath been spoken. And we also know that they have been translated by the gift and power of God. For his voice hath declared it unto us, wherefore we know of a surety that the work is true. And we also testify that we have seen the engravings which are upon the plates, and they have been shown unto us by the power of God and not of man. And we declare with words of soberness that an angel of God came down from heaven, and he brought and laid before our eyes that we beheld and saw the plates and the engravings thereon. And we know that it is by the grace of God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ that we beheld and bear record that these things are true, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Nevertheless, the voice of the Lord commanded us that we should bear record of it. Wherefore, to be obedient unto the commandments of God, we bear testimony of these things. And we know that if we are faithful in Christ, we shall rid our garments of the blood of all men, and be found spotless before the judgment seat of Christ, and shall dwell with him eternally in the heavens. And the honor be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, which is one God. Amen. Oliver Cowdery, David Whitmer, Martin Harris. Some people have to have a world of evidence before they can come anywhere in the neighborhood of believing anything. But for me, when a man tells me that he has 
seen the engravings which are upon the plates. And not only that, but an angel was there at the time and saw him see them. <laughs> it probably took his receipt for it. I am very far on the road to conviction, no matter whether I ever heard of that man before or not, and even if I do not know the name of the angel or his, or his nationality either. Next is this. And also the testimony of eight witnesses. Be it known unto all nations, kindreds, tongues, and people, unto whom this work shall come, that Joseph Smith, Jr., the translator of this work, has shown unto us the plates of which hath been spoken, which have the appearance of gold, and as many of the leaves as the said Smith has translated, we did handle with our hands, and we also saw the engravings thereon, all of which has the appearance of ancient work, and of curious workmanship. And this we bear record with words of soberness that the said Smith has shown unto us. For we have seen and hefted and known and know of a surety that the said Smith has got the plates of which we have spoken. And we give our names unto the world to witness unto the world that which we have seen. And we lie not, God bearing witness of it. Christian Whitmer, Jacob Whitmer, Peter Whitmer, Jr., John Whitmer, Hiram Page, Joseph Smith, Sr., Hiram Smith, Samuel H. Smith. <clears throat> and when I am far on the road to conviction, and eight men, be they grammatical or otherwise, come forward and tell me that they have seen the plates too, and not only those plates, <laughs> and not only seen those plates, but hefted them, I am convinced. I could not feel more satisfied and at rest if the entire Whitmer family had testified. <laughs> the Mormon Bible consists of 15 books, being the books of Jacob, Enos, Jerem, Omni, Mosiah, Zenith, Alma, Helaman, Ether, Moroni, two books of Mormon, and three of Nephi. And the first book of Nephi is a plagiarism of the Old Testament, which gives an account of the exodus from Jerusalem of the children of Lehi. And it goes on to tell of their wanderings in the wilderness during eight years and their supernatural protection by one of, by one of their number, a party by the name of Nephi. They finally reached the land of Bountiful and camped by the sea. After they had remained there, for the space of many days, which is more scriptural than definite, Nephi was commanded from on high to build a ship wherein to carry the people across the waters. He tra tra travestied Noah's Ark, but he obeyed orders in the matter of the plan. He finished the ship in a single day, while his brethren stood by and made fun of it, and of him too, saying, Our brother is a fool, for he thinketh that he can build a ship. They did not wait for the timbers to dry, but the whole tribe or nation sailed the next day. Then a, bit of, then a bit of genuine nature cropped out and is revealed by outspoken Nephi with scriptural frankness. They all go out on a spree. They and also their wives began to make themselves merry, insomuch that they began to dance and to sing and to speak with much rudeness. Ye, they were lifted up into, unto exceeding rudeness. Nephi tried to stop these scandalous proceedings, but they tied him neck and heels and went on with their lark. But observe how Nephi the prophet circumvented them by the aid of the invisible powers. And it came to pass that after they had bound him in so much that I could not move. Oh, and it came to pass that after they had bound me in so much that I could not move. The compass which had been prepared of the Lord did cease to work. Wherefore they knew not whither they should steer the ship, insomuch that there arose a great storm, ye, a great and terrible tempest. And we were driven back upon the waters for the space of three days. And they began to be frightened exceedingly, lest they should be drowned in the sea. Nevertheless, they did not loose me. And on the fourth day, which we had been driven back, the tempest began to be exceeding sore. <laughs> and it came to pass that we were about to be swallowed up 
in the depths of the sea. They had, they had tied him. And it came to pass, after they had loosened, loosened me, behold, I took the compass, and it did work whither I desired it. And it came to pass that I prayed unto the Lord, and after I had prayed, the winds did cease, and the storm did cease, and there was a great